And welcome back. Great to have your company. Uh, not a bad day out there. A bit overcast, but uh, no rain as yet. Uh, so let us know if it's uh, pelting down in your direction. Uh, 822 is the number to call. Now, this is a landmark year, I've got to say, for an event that's etched itself into uh, the South Australian calendar. The Sala Festival, that's the South Australian Living Artist Festival, is celebrating its 20th anniversary. That's quite an achievement, isn't it? A wonderful achievement for event, an event that has become uh, the biggest community-based arts festival in all of Australia. For the next month, uh, we'll be able to enjoy the talents of hundreds of artists displaying their talents uh, in, in the oddest of places throughout the state. Joining me in the studio is the person in charge of this great event, uh, Penny Griggs, Sala Director. Hello there. Hi, Alan. Welcome aboard and <laughs> uh, congratulations. You. Happy birthday. Oh, yes. Thank you. 20. <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> we were just saying uh, before the, during the break, um, I've done a number of uh, stories uh, with Keith Conlon and the team on postcards on Sala over the years. Yes. And I had to pinch myself when I read it was its 20th anniversary. I know. It's hard to believe, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It is. um, we're also lucky enough to have uh, one of the artists featuring in this year's festival, Chris Christopher Orchard. Hi, Christopher. Hi. How are you doing? Well, well. Um, you'll, we'll get to your exhibition in, in a moment, mm. uh, but you're, let, let's have a look at the history of this great uh, festival. How did it all begin 20 years ago? Well, it started, it was the idea of Paul Greenaway, who um, owns Greenway Art Gallery and he gathered the commercial gallery sector together with this concept, approached um, Sam Hill Smith from Hill Smith Gallery and the other commercial galleries said, I think we need to have an event that celebrates all artists of all types, um, which is a pretty radical concept yeah. coming from the commercial sector and it was about audience development, it was about valuing local artists and developing an audience for living artists so that's sort of how it began um, I think he went to the Arts Minister at the time, Di Laidlaw, pitched the idea. She loved it. Um, she's actually an artist herself now since um, retiring. So, um, you know, it's been an, an amazing idea that has just grown and grown over the years. Now, it began, didn't it, as just one week? That's and right. It, it, grow, it, it lasts the whole month. That's right. It started as one week. It was always statewide. There were 51, I think, exhibitions in that first year. Um, this year we've got si over 660 exhibitions and events oh, around amazing, the state. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about some of those in a moment. Uh, uh, what, what, what do you think the secret's been behind it, uh, that, that, that it's been such a runaway success, to grow into the biggest such festival in Australia? Well, I think part of it is because it's in South Australia. You know, South Australia's got such a great tradition of being a festival state. I think South Australians really embrace being part of a festival and it's you know you can't miss it here can you it's you know the, the festivals take over the the city and the mm. state um so i think that's part of it um i think there is a lot of um you know a lot of people that like to participate and are really valuing visual arts and um participation is part of that so yeah it's really it's hard to tell but certainly i think it's south australians themselves <laughs> it sort of reinforces that whole image of, of us being the festival state isn't it uh, exactly like yeah, yeah yeah and because it's for local artists like you know everyone knows someone or most people i come across are like oh my auntie's been part of mm. it or my cousin mm. or my best friend or you know someone they know is part of the festival what i found find unique about it too is a lot of these things you can sort of dismiss as, but oh, that's for the arty farty sector of the community. Mm. Sala goes beyond that, doesn't it? And I think that's one of the secrets to its success. It doesn't just, you know, service that small sector of the community out there. That's it's right. It's for everyone. For, it is for everyone. Mm. And you know, you participate in you participate in Sala whether you want to or not. <laughs> you know, you'll arrive at the airport. There'll be a big exhibition for you to enjoy or walk past. <laughs> You go to your local cafe, there's probably a Sala exhibition. You walk past the local shops, there might even be something in the butcher window. You know, it's everywhere. So whether you like it or not, you're going to be part of it and, um, you know, hopefully you'll engage with something. How on earth do you actually manage a... a, a, a uh, something this big? I mean, as you say, it's absolutely everywhere. How do you manage it? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I'm not really sure how we do. We're a very small team. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's two of us that work full-time year-round. There are only two of you. Yes, wow. yes. And, um, you know, we have got a really good website. We work with some great web developers and there's an app this year, which is exciting, so people can download an app and explore the festival that way. But it really is 
because it's 20 years old now, I guess, you know, we've got great community support. Most of the local councils are really supportive. So it's, it's, it's beyond us, really. You know, artists and venues have been doing it for a long time. They know what the deal is and they go out and create these exhibitions and we promote them. We're talking to Penny Griggs, the director of uh, the Sala Festival, which kicks off tomorrow, uh, celebrating 20 years and certainly uh, something that we should be uh, suitably proud of here in South Australia because it's become the biggest uh, uh, such a uh, festival in Australia. Do you actually get people coming to you and saying, hey, I've got a blank wall? All the I time. I can get involved? Yeah, yeah, all the time. So in the uh, before registrations close, we have a list of venues who are looking for artists and we have a list of artists looking for venues. So we kind of have a bit of a Tinder role mm-hmm. um, as, and ma- matchmaking. <laughs> Tinder <role. laughs> Tinderization, they yeah, call it. Yeah. <laughs> so we like to, you know, we play a part in matching artists and venues together um, and... That's yeah. That's a big part of what we do. Yeah. Now the other thing too is we sh- we shouldn't overlook the the role you've played uh, over the years in supporting emerging artists. So it's not just established artists mm. who have got a name or you know mm-hmm. have got a reputation, but me starting out, uh, you know, with my uh, with my you know matchstick. Uh, 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 you know, sculpture. Sculpture, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, which I don't do, by the way. Um, but this is an option for me, isn't it, to, to oh, actually get, get some exposure? Oh, for everyone. Like, we have um, kindergarten children participating this year, um, as well as nursing home residents. So um, amateur artists, emerging artists, um, and everything in between, full-time established artists. Yeah, everyone, prisoners even, are participating this year. There's a prisoner art exhibition right. at the festival centre so yeah absolutely anyone who participates enjoys making um and are are prepared to share their work with the wider community they're all involved Mm, absolutely wonderful initiative um if you've uh, been involved or uh uh, you know you, you can buy the, uh, the art pieces as well. Yeah, most, of most, the, most the um, yeah, most exhibitions. There's so if you've been involved uh, or uh, you've been, you've had some of your pieces in the exhibition over the years, 20 years is a long time, give us a call. 8223 is the number to call. Now, it's not just, of course, paintings. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's a whole, the whole gamut, isn't it, of anything? Every type of visual art form you can imagine. There's drawing, like Chris does, and painting. Uh, but sculpture, you mentioned before, uh, there's moving image work. We even have some performance art as well. Okay. On the moving image, you, you, you said uh, we've just been having a talk uh, in the last hour about social media and, you know, the things being posted on social media and how it might come back and bite you on the bum when you're a bit <laughs> older. Uh, aimed particularly at teenagers about to be careful about what they're putting on. Um, the The modern electronic form of art, mm. uh, that uh, plays a role too, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. There's... Um, You know, there's so many changes happening in the art world and moving image is obviously a big part of that, but also artists promoting their work through social media. You know, Instagram particularly is proved to be a very good way of artists to sell their work or get a really large following mm. in their own right um, and people are obsessed with their artists and you know follow every every little thing that they do and uh, we've got Instagram too as part of Sala and actually we've got um, we've given it over to the artists this year so we have different artists as special guests so they're getting four days each and okay. posting about their preparations for Sala or their favourite artists their favourite South Australian artists so it's a really great way to um, promote what you do. But, yes, moving image work, um, you know, all sorts of things like that. Um, Chris probably knows a bit more about some of the more emerging um, art forms, but there's, um, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> Chris, now you're uh, the former head of drawing at the uh, the Adelaide Central uh, School of Art, uh, you know, a wonderful institution uh, steeped in Adelaide's history as well. Mm. Uh, you've been involved in Sala from day one mm. in that role. Much. Yeah, I was, so we've got you to blame partially. Well, <laughs> you know, I think when Paul formed his first board, uh, it was fascinating because he was um, like a CEO of any any board, uh, reporting to any board. But um, he drove the board. He, it, you couldn't um, rest on your laurels and on on the first sailor board. You had to have a job. Mm-hmm. You had to do things and get out there and make things happen. 
So uh, there was a broad education component, there was a broad emerging artist uh, engagement, um, and just basically getting out there and doing whatever you could to um, connect the network of artists that uh, were out there it was pretty important. So uh, as you iterated, it was uh, one week and um, a limited number of venues and a limited number of artists. But uh, over my time, um, being loosely and closely associated mm. with it, I've watched it just burgeon. It's been amazing. What, what's changed about... Has it the... Is it the art and the artists who have changed, or is it the community, or have we both sort of melded together and taken this journey together? Well, I think I really this is an, this is exemplary because it's an exemplary idea because it is actually changing community perceptions. Mm. Mm. Not only uh, the community who are the audience of this work, but the people who make it. And I was talking to Penny just earlier saying there's a lot of early little uh, events that were coming into the Sala that have now become quite professional. Um, and it's always been interesting that the, the uh, more cutting edge, the more professional end of visual arts practice has watched Sala with sometimes a little bit of suspicion and sometimes, you know, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll get involved and see, you know, see what my gallery thinks or whatever. They're getting in now. They're moving in. They're, um, Penny started an artist advisory group and uh, the number of people who give their time freely to this, it's kind of indicative of the overall sense of, I think we're pretty proud of this. Mm, mm, mm. And I guess uh, it's been so successful they can't afford not to be involved either. Mm. You know, for, yeah. for, for straight out survival. Mm. We're talking to uh, Penny Griggs, uh, the director of Sala, and also uh, Christopher Orchard, who's uh, a featured uh, artist in this year's festival. Uh, would love to know your thoughts. 8223 0000. And the temperature's dropping. It's down to 12.8, so I don't think we're going to meet uh, our top of uh, our forecast top of 15 degrees somehow getting a bit nippy out there. Uh, we've got uh, special guests in the studio, Penny Griggs, who's the director of the Sala Festival, and also Chris, uh, Christopher Orchard, who's uh, one of the uh, artists featured in this year's uh, festival. And, of course, the festival has been running for 20 years, so congratulations to a wonderful organisation and uh, for what it's done for South Australia's reputation as being uh, the festival centre and the arts centre of, of Australia. <laughs> let's, let's take that title. I think we should. We should, we should. Um, Penny, um, uh, the... Um, the figures are absolutely amazing. Uh, you've got to more than more than uh, five hundred uh, venues uh, out there this yes. year alone. Yeah, five hundred and seventy venues this year. Um, yeah, six over six hundred and sixty exhibitions and events, um, with over six thousand participating artists. Six thousand. That's an awful that's lot of right. artists. It's a lot of. Yeah. That's a lot of people in mm. South Australia making art. And sharing it mm. with everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's enormous. How many, um, how many visitors do you get over the course of the, the, the festival? We estimate over 600,000. So, you know, we have some very high-profile exhibitions, obviously, at the Art Gallery of South Australia. Chris is featured there this year, which is great. Um, and the Adelaide Airport, as I said, you know, the Flinders Medical Centre, they get, you know, a lot of people through those galleries. Um, so because it's, you know, such a variety of different venues... Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people see exhibitions through the month of August. Mm -hmm. Now, mm. of course, most uh, pieces are for sale. What sort of a turnover do you get? Uh, well, we again we estimate it's uh, 1.5 million dollars wow. worth of art sales. It's 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 really a bit hard for us to absolutely know, but that's that's the estimate. Yeah, a lot of some artists don't sell work and don't want to sell work. It's more about just sharing what they do mm. and um, and how they do it. Um, but you know, for some it is about sales and and again it's like being introduced to an artist during sale and maybe the sale will come down exactly, the track. Further down you know, the track they get to more of their work. Yeah. That's right. And, yeah. you know, we have the open studio um, weekend and, and a lot of artists open their studios throughout the, the festival and that's a great way to get to know the artists a little bit better and see how they work and talk about and learn about their practice. And, you know, that's also how people, you know, they go, oh, I want to commission something for someone or, mm. you know, they get to know people. And, yeah, so there's sales after as well. Mm. Yeah. One and a half million dollars worth is, is pretty good though, isn't it? It's that's really good. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Christopher, um, you're um, uh, you're a drawing artist, hmm. so you're not a bad doodler. 
Is that is that being a bit? I'm unkind? getting I'm it's, getting better. You're getting better at doodling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your work. I um, I probably started drawing um around about when did you start drawing. I, drew, I started drawing when I was about six years old, like all of us. But um, I really began to take it seriously after about 1976. Uh, I, I trained as an art teacher and I majored in sculpture. Um, but drawing had always eluded me, and I thought, well, I better. I really am getting interested in this. So I took off overseas with my darling wife Julie, and we combi vanned around Europe and went to all the great museums and mm-hmm. began to learn more about it. And then I had the good fortune to join the teaching staff at Adelaide Central School of Art, which was devoted completely to the training in skills yep. and conceptual development and so forth. So I began to eavesdrop and learn a lot from my my colleagues in there and. More and more, I discovered that uh, um, there's a kind of rational approach to drawing that means, you know, if you follow certain uh, uh, approaches, you can begin to improve enormously what you're able to represent or depict uh, of the world. And then almost suddenly, but not quite suddenly, uh, this little avatar began to appear, the little bald man who's become a bit of a signature for me. Um, and that I push him into bits of the world that I can either not go into or don't desire to or would like to imagine is there. Um, and then he has matured with me. He's got <laughs> closer to the ground. <laughs> He's got closer to the ground. I've got a uh, chin. I've got more hair um, and so forth. And um, I'm, a- I'm able to speak through uh, his, uh, his guise, you know, to the world. Of, What's his name? Uh, I'd like to... Th- I like to think of him sometimes as Estragon out of Waiting for Godot. Yeah, it's just yeah, such okay, a good yeah, name. Yeah. You know? And it's always that question, the Vladimir and Estragon, they asked each other at the end of an event, what shall we do now? You know, so the little bald man spends a lot of time saying, oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> <You know? laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Um, now, your exhibition's on at the, the art gallery. Yes. So, you yes, know, top small belly. survey. Hey? It's lovely. It's lovely. Yeah, it's yeah. like a sala... So I was very good like that, you know, not only the exhibition and exposure, but the, the monograph. Um, it's a 160-page hardcover published by Wakefield Press, um, and it's just beautiful, delicious book. Uh, and f- the first time I cited it, um, I, said, I, I immediately said, who's this? Because, <laughs> you know, you see that, you see something quite unique in the world. And so Sala has taken me on, an, on a great journey, you know, and I've been able to contribute a little bit and it has just provided a forum for me yeah, to, yeah. you know, speak to the world. And by the way, just a quick one, but Sala is unique in the world. It's a really interesting idea, you know, an uncurated festival celebrating visual arts practice in whatever form it is. In a lot of places in the world it would be unthinkable. It's nowhere else? No. 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 Really? Absolutely yeah. nowhere else on the planet. That's a, that's a huge accolade, isn't it? It for, is. For, for little old Adelaide. Mm. Adelaide does mm. it again. Yeah, Adelaide does it again in this, mm. this sector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, uh, what are your favourites? Uh, um, well, that's, a, that's an unfair question, not <laughs> favourites. What are some of the highlights? What, what, what do you reckon uh, people should... What, what's on the must-see list? Well, I think say? Chris hasn't mentioned his exhibition at BMG as well, so that, that'll be a bigger, even bigger show. So I think that'll be definitely no. a highlight. Um, we've got Catherine Truman at um, Jam Factory. She was last year's Sala Featured Artist, so mm-hmm. she's um, done a, another big exhibition. She's part of the Icon series at Jam Factory this year, and that's a stunning exhibition. Um, another beautiful artist um, who wor- has worked with Chris in the past, Sarah Waters. She's um, exhibiting at Ace Open, which is the new contemporary art space um, in the Lion Arts Centre as well. Um, Krista Rosa at Light Square Gallery. Um, oh, look, there's just so many great exhibitions. Jerry Wedd's down at Signal Point Gallery yeah, at yeah. Goolwa. No, Trent um, Park at... Oh, Trent Park's at Samstag, Samstag. and Narelle mm. Orsio. Michelle yeah. Nikus also at Samstag. So some of our, you know, very best South Australian artists are exhibiting as part of Sala this year. But then um, Donovan Christie, um, he does the beautiful um, streetscapes that yes, feature on yeah. the Fritz magazine yeah. um, cover. He's got a fantastic show at Studio 
Studio Bowden. Mm. Uh, there's also Fran Festival is happening, a feminist um, art festival that's happening later in the in the festival. So Dan, Dan Withy at oh uh, Dan Withy at Hillsmith. Hillsmith. Mm. So something for absolutely everyone. Yeah. There's no all doubt about tastes that. and all, all tastes. budgets as yeah, well. Yeah, so absolutely. you know you can. Now where's the where's the best uh, place for people to go? The website. Absolutely, salafestival dot com. Um, and you can get all the details for the get program there. Get all the details there. about uh, where everything is and uh, when it's opened. Uh, and uh, I would uh, uh, certainly recommend everyone does that because it's, it is a wonderful, it's a wonderful uh, um, tribute to uh, uh, South Australia's uh, artists and mm. something we all should be very proud of. It mm. is, absolutely. So well done. Thanks, Congratulations. Alan. And happy birthday. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, stay with us. Coming up uh, after the, uh, the 2 o'clock news, we'll have a look at uh, our obsession with the weather.